soldiers of the 291st Regiment of the Occupying Russian Army have released a video message. In the video address, the soldiers fighting in the direction of Zaporizhia complained that they were sent to death by their commanders, that they were not provided with the necessary ammunition, and that those of them complaining, get punished. Soldiers added that those who return safely from the battle are sent to assault again. Stressing that a large number of servicemen have died, the soldiers demanded the replacement of their commanders. Мы, как видите, готовы встретить своего любимое командование, которое не нелюбимое, как мы готовы встретить, которые погубили все всех наших ребят, пацанов, и также по после вчерашнего наката при откате трех сотых и те те, кто испугался, как они называют пятихатки ебаные и то, что мы мясо. Они нас за, за людей не, не считают. Был бы выставлен за, за гран то есть на Найпера, которые действовали против нас, своего Ижи. При этом мы хотим на, написать массовое обращение во, во всей станции, чтобы это в конце концов уже прекратилось. Да, и так как вчера была, были отправлены три штурмовые группы, из них добралось только три человека и не было оказано никакого прикрытия. Все, кто были ранены, не было предоставлено эвакуации. Некоторые выбирались так, как могли. Люди, которые вернулись, их отправляют в накат с ножами. Хотят отправить. Без, без оружия. Без оружия. Какая командование на наше говорит, что мы не о мясо. За, за людей нас здесь не, никто не считает это отношение как же животным при прямом смысле Ждите, поэтому мы, мы да, хотим чтобы вообще. это уже просто прекратилось чтобы на нас считали за людей мы не имеем мяса и к такому как командованию каким что турмам мы, мы готовы но как командование нам такое не надо мы будем добиваться -то того, чтобы такое командование -то также испарилось, как и наши пацаны. Также было озвучено, в случае того, что если мы закрепимся, никакого подвоза боекомплектов не будет. Мы идем практически пустые туда. Ни эвакуации, ни подвоза, ничего не будет. Ну, просто билет в одну сторону. Без расчета на то, что кто-то вернется оттуда. Если кто-то вернется, их... Собирают и обратно. Вот так вот обстоят дела. Сегодня число какое? Седьмое? Восьмое. Так что люди знаете, что творят беспредел. Верхушки. Ну все мясо ебаное. Вот это можно. Footage has been released, showing the evacuation from the siege of 35 servicemen of the Medoid unit under the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Forces 169th Brigade. Besieged near one of the occupied villages, the fighters resisted until the end and waited for help from their fellow soldiers. The fighters were evacuated from the area without any loss with the support of the armored fighting vehicles of the infantrymen who approached the besieged soldiers from the area under the control of Russian servicemen. A Ukrainian telegram channel that shared the video, pointed to the bravery of Ukrainian soldiers who risked their lives to help their fellow soldiers despite the danger of being attacked by Russians. Russian military propagandists have begun openly reporting on the colossal losses among Russian troops in Ukraine, emphasizing the horrific scale of casualties among assault infantry. Reports shared by Russian journalists indicate that commanders are throwing unprepared soldiers to the front lines, where their lives, according to Russian z -War correspondent Kashevarova, are measured in days. According to Kashevarova, 
Russian soldiers are becoming expendable and the losses among stormtroopers have reached alarming proportions. She notes that the average life expectancy at the front is less than a month, and from the moment of signing a contract until death, it often takes only 12 to 17 days. The soldiers sent to the front are those who lack sufficient training and experience, or those who are not fully treated and wounded, who return to battle due to a lack of resources or simply because of the ruthless policies of the command. The effectiveness of the Z infantry on the battlefield is close to zero, turning what is happening into a senseless and expensive extermination of human lives. As Kashevarova points out, in no other area of Russian life can one find such an unprofitable attitude to human and financial resources as in the army. The Russian side's reports indicates that the losses among Russian troops, which Moscow continues to carefully conceal, have reached critical levels. Ukraine sees in these admissions confirmation that the human losses suffered by Russia are in the tens of thousands for the sake of a war that has no end in sight and that is destroying the Russian population for unachievable goals. Recall Vladimir Putin's refusal to withdraw troops from Ukraine and his decision to send poorly trained teenage conscripts to defend Kursk Oblast against a Ukrainian incursion reveals a stark shift in Russian military strategy. Conscripts were meant to serve only in non-combat roles in Russia. Military observers didn't notice large-scale redeployments from the occupied parts of Ukraine with only limited transfers noted, primarily from Ukraine south. Meanwhile, the intensity of Russian ground assault in eastern Ukrainian Donetsk Oblast does not decrease. Meanwhile, various sources reported the transfer of conscripts and preparations for such movements from multiple regions across Russia to Kursk Oblast. The Telegraph argues that this decision marks a departure from Putin's previous policy, which stated that conscripts would only serve in support roles within Russia. The decision to deploy conscripts in Kursk has even sparked limited protests, an uncommon event in the authoritarian Russia. Forced to choose between the lives of unprepared young men and its ambitions for further gains in eastern Ukraine, the Kremlin chose those gains, the Telegraph wrote. An Iranian-made Shahid drone belonging to the Russian army crashed into a residential building in Belgorod region on November 5. Images of the drone hitting the building and the moment of the explosion were spread on Telegram channels. It should be noted that there was a massive drone attack on the territory of Ukraine on November 5. Following the attack, one of the drones returned to Russian territory. The Ukrainian side reported that it was the same drone that crashed into the residential building. One person was injured as a result of the incident. Awesome.